Hey guys, what is up? Lefty back here again and thanks for checking out the video. So today I'm going to be doing a quick little review of the Lancer 5 uh, magazines for the Air 15 Pro Lancer. So let's get right into it. Alright, so for people who do not know, uh, the Lancer magazines are kind of your mixture of your uh, polymer magazine body with your metal reinforced feed lip. So obviously that can kind of uh, have the nice durability and flexibility of polymer. With you know, Obviously when you have metal magazines they can dent and there you go, that whole magazine is basically broken unless you can undent it. Uh, but also has the strength of the metal feed lip so you don't have the issues with cracking and then breaking off and stuff like that. Um, now they come in basically two main flavors. You got your opaque uh, black or flat dark earth and then you have either your translucent smoke or your translucent flat dark earth and they also have a clear version which in my opinion looks kind of eh but I do love the uh, translucent smoke just because you can see the rounds through them um, and they do have very convenient uh, markings right here to tell how many rounds you have in the magazine so uh, pretty cool with the smoke ones now quick little review right out the gate I think these things are completely solid I've had no issues uh, this is my first magazine and ironically, this one apparently does have a follower mold number issue or something like that. They issued a recall for a follower change or something like that. I never did that. Um, I had a little bit of hiccups in one of my rifles with it, but now it's been working fine. So I don't know if the issue worked itself out or whatever. But uh, these you can basically find for around 15 bucks. Uh, the translucent ones are going to be paying around 18 bucks um, for these kind of magazines now. Whether you want to spend that much, it's up to you. Uh, personally, if I think a magazine is a significantly better, I'm going to pay the extra money. Um, you know, It's going to have to be yeah, your own personal preference at the end of the day. Um, I'm going to compare it to the Gen 2 P Mag because this is probably your, one of your cheapest, most reliable magazines you can find. Now, real quick with the Gen 2 P Mag is that I've never had any issues with P Mags. Um, I've had them for um, a number of years with it fully loaded. Um, I've never had any issues with the feed lips cracking. Uh, however, I know people have. I'm just going to say my personal experience is I've never had any issues with the feed lips or anything like that. These things have been 100% reliable in every gun that I've used them in, uh, including the Gen 3s and pretty much every magazine made by uh, Magpul, honestly. So uh, that's my kind of standpoint. Now, you can find these for about 10 to 12 bucks uh, and on sale, sometimes around 8 bucks. So, really, the question kind of comes down to it, in my opinion is are these worth six bucks more or three to five bucks more basically um, so are they worth 50 percent the the price increase uh then that's kind of up to you now on their own these are very good magazines i have no issues with them like i said um they have the steel reinforcement so if you need those you know just a kind of a peace of mind it's definitely you know good to have in my opinion it's not going to be like a negative um but you know like i said these are clear it doesn't have the window uh, like the PMX, this is obviously a little bit more, one, it looks a little bit more sexy, and one, it's a little bit more useful, honestly, than just having a window with a little orange uh, tab in there telling you how much your rounds are left in the magazine. So, in that regard, you know, make up your own mind. Uh, personally, I still prefer the magazine body of the PMAG. I like the grip of it, and I also like the feel of it. Um, the Gen 3, obviously, the, the Gen 3 mold of the PMAG is a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, one thing I really like, and I've already kind of said this before, is the PMAG has this little feed lip ramp shelf thing for the actual floor plate. And I like that because one, that's a little bit of an index point. When I go to grab a magazine, I can slide my hand all the way down until I find it. And then also, too, if I'm doing some type of a tactical reload, I can basically, if this was in the gun, I can basically slam this magazine into the other one and lock it in there with that... Um, with the floor plate there so I can get a nice uh, really firm grip on it. Uh, that's just kind of my technique of how I do that. You know, your, your mileage may vary depending on certain things, but I do like the shape and the function of this a little bit better in terms of the magazine body. And I really, really wish uh, Lancer or a third party or whoever would make a floor plate that actually does jut out a little bit. Because I even though they have kind of this Gen 4 uh, Glock texture on the magazine body, they are a little bit uh, slick in my opinion. Um, compared to the Gen, well, I guess just compared to the PMAGs in general, because you, again, you do have that lip there, which gives you a nice purchase when trying to pull out of a pouch or pulling out of the actual rifle itself. Um, one thing I will say about these magazines, the translucents are definitely a little bit more weaker in terms of a pushing in. I can actually flex the magazine body inward. Uh, that being said, though, um, it's not really that big of an issue. The opaque ones do not have that issue, at least nowhere near as much. 
So um, whatever polymer issues they have to do to make this clear, you do lose a little bit of rigidity in terms of squeezing it. Now, is that going to have an issue with the liability, or excuse me, the longevity of the magazine? I don't know. Like I said, I've never had any issues with these, but I've used these a lot more, and I've never, never had any issues with these dropping them on the floor or anything like that. So, um, you know, just be aware that the polymer construction of the Magpul seems to be a little bit better because there's no way I can actually uh, flex this magazine. It's very, very rigid. So. Just keep that in mind as well. But like I said, at the end of the day, you know, are these magazines worth the 50% price increase? Uh, to me, for my, you know, if you want to put it into the kind of the long-term storage of magazines, just having a whole bunch of magazines just in case the shit hits the van or something like that, I think that, you know, the Gen 3s are kind of my favorite. They're around 14 bucks usually. Um, you know, you can buy them cheap, stack them deep kind of thing. Um, and then for my duty magazines, the ones that I actually have uh, fully loaded all the time, I tend to go with these ones. Now, again, it's personal preference if you want to kind of spend 50% more on these magazines, even though they function basically the same. It's up to you. But at the end of the day, just regarding the PMAG, I think these are actually, uh, these magazines are very, very good. So if you haven't tried them, try them out. And uh, anyway, thanks you guys for watching. Be good.